Stop. Oh my gosh. <laughs> stop. Should I stop collaborating right. and listen? Good morning. Welcome to the Backpack Show, everybody, where we bring you insights about success from unusual places. I am uh, I'm ready for today because we get to talk about tasty baked goods. Oh. And we get to talk about New Year's traditions and yoga. Because I guess it wouldn't be hard to balance if you ate a bunch of baked goods. Hard well, to it, it would be a stretch. <sighs> See, I need a bad joke card because that's not yeah, like yellow card joke. material. But it's like dad joke. Dad that's joke. a dad joke. Oh, oh so. Yeah, you I did not know the dad joker would be here today. <laughs> you have. <a> <laughs> You know, it's been a minute since I got to use that. So, <laughs> listen, one quick thing for everybody who's here, especially if it's your first time at Fight Club, you have to fight. You have to leave a comment. We don't know you're here. Don't think you're getting credit for showing up without actually saying a comment. You are not. So, say hey or something or say something funny or say credit. something. People don't come for credit. They come because, oh, Coach Woodard. Hello. So, because of Coach Woodard, we ask everybody for their origin story and we never miss. Carrie, what's Pop your origin story? Here. Hi, everyone. Tim Kitzer from NBA Jam and NFL Blitz, welcoming you to The Backpack Show. Your hosts, Chris Brogan, Kerry Gorgon, Boom Shakalaka. Backpack Show. So who knew getting bit by a radioactive spider was going to do that? I never would have known. I'm just saying. So <sighs> I am so excited. I went looking for bakers. <laughs> um, I think I was hungry one day or something. I was like, you know what I would like to find? Bakers. Some bakers to go on the show. So I found two Doe girls, their sisters, Tracy and Kelly Wright out of Atlanta, who started their own business. We're going to talk to them about how they started the business, their origin story, how they've kept it going through the pandemic, what makes them different from other bake shops and that sort of thing. So that's going to be fun. And we're going to talk with Mylon Dominguez, who is Dean of the New York Film Academy's South Beach campus. She's also a writer, like a screenwriter, filmmaker, and a yoga teacher. And we're going to talk with her about New Year's rituals, the way people get ready for the new year. Can we get in trouble with Dean Dominguez? That seems yep. like a, <laughs> feels like one of those, like, you know, after high school movies right. or something like that. You would um, be perpetually in trouble with Dean Dominguez, I feel like. Chip Griffin's first time today. Welcome, Mr. Uh, Griffin, was it? Good to see you. <laughs> to see what you. about butchers and candlestick makers? We've had We've an had amateur. Was it amateur butcher? No, freelance. Freelance butcher. Freelance butcher. Yeah. DJ amateur. Cummerbund. Yeah. Who was also so, a matchup DJ wizard. <laughs> on YouTube. Yeah. But apparently his, the, his main source of income comes from being a freelance butcher. You know, I didn't know. By the way, I did not know that when I asked him that question about DJing. I thought he would DJ clubs. He's DJ Cummerbund. But no, yeah. he's like a he's like a, a bedroom DJ. I had many questions about that, what being a freelance butcher entails. So go freelance back and check out that episode so if sketchy. you're interested. It sounds so sketchy. Because I sure was. So but. we got to get into dough. Uh, please leave some comments. Let us know that you're here and you're First, live and you're one. Some sponsors we need to thank really quickly. I was just going to say. We have a whole new way of doing things because you all keep leaving after the first ad. So Stop we're doing it. ads first. Ready? Ads. Uh, make some shows. See brogan.me slash streamyard. You can make your own show just like that. Think about this. Tracy Wright's thinking at this very second. What if we made a two doe girls show? And Ooh, and Kelly is saying, I'm not so sure I should make a two doe girls show. You're saying, yes, you are. Think of our energy. Think about how much people will love me. Girl, you know this is going to be an amazing show. Don't speak for Kelly. Do I am speaking for her. For them. I'm speaking you don't for Tracy. speak for Tracy Kelly. Knows like, this is you what should. Kelly. See you should have slash StreamYard. Make, make your show. own show. It's crazy easy. When Mylen writes her next book, she's going to put it on pub site, pub-site.com. You can put it in a big library like this and not be found, or you can make your own cool author website at pub site, pub-site.com. This thing is amazing. You can make your own site. It'll just take you a couple hours. Or if you don't <laughs> feel like doing it because you're lazy, do it for 500 bucks. It can make the and whole thing. People just like that kind of thing. It doesn't make them lazy. Mm. So if you do it yourself, you can do it. It is a 14 day free trial. Try it out. After that, it's just $19.99 a month. And if you want them to do it for you, even though it's easy, $499 gets you the whole website. It's ridiculous, really. It's amazing. I would get it from here, even if I hadn't, if like I wasn't an author, and then I just write the book later. Made by two absolute <laughs> gypsies that we've never even heard of before. Powered by FSB Associates, the best book publicity firm in the business. Go get it. Pub site.com. FSB Associates has been in business for two years. They've been, you know, 25 heading to years. You stop. 25 years. Uh, also sponsored by Johnsonville. Johnsonville Sausage. Hey. Not even kidding. I should get a card for them. But Johnsonville, you know, we don't have a card because we just keep sponsoring wow. the sausage. So, so 
Look at these. Look at the chats happening in the comments. Like we're My off the rails already. Has no appeal. I, are there transcripts for these? Thank God there are not. Carla, nine. you are so Carla. lucky they're not. But when you, you know, <laughs> you probably know Mylen. So you know, she's one of your type of people, Carla. What is that Carla. supposed to mean? Like hey. healthy and fitness people. Okay, Mylen probably knows her. It's needs the ornery card this morning. Do I make you <laughs> ornery, baby? Do I? Sure. All right. And look, gonna... Twitter read your uh, newsletter. Oh, you sure did. Thing. Not Chow yet. from Snowy Milan. Did you have snow for the only time in 2020? Uh, Milan, oh, that's God, where God. the two go Dogo are now. Uh, and Tracy Kelly, they're set up in the, the Milan of the uh, West, I think we like to call it. Atlanta? <laughs> would, you, would you say it's kind of like another oh. Milan over there? <laughs> False information. Uh, <laughs> they're like, what? No. Fake no. news. Fake news. <laughs> So you're mm. actual sisters in business together. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. What, is, what is that about? I know. That? Weird. My sister yeah. drives me insane. Like I yeah, love her. She, but... does. she does. We do all the time. But it, it's it, fun. It works though. I don't know how, but it does. Which one, which one of you is at the heart of the, the arguments that shouldn't happen? Which one of you starts the argument that shouldn't happen? <laughs> oh, I think they're. <laughs> but you know, honestly, honestly, we don't really argue. We have our Jeez. little, our little, our little sentences, our words. No, we use she, our doesn't, words. she doesn't use sentences. She is a human Google. And if you ask her one thing, you're going to get a dissertation for like a year of her responding to you. So no, <laughs> she's lying, but yeah. So you don't ask questions unless you really want the answers. So why baking? <laughs> Why baking? You could go into any kind of business together as sisters. Why baking? Well, that's that's what we grew up doing since we were children. We were always in the in the kitchen and our household was known for our delicious desserts. So every holiday we had to bring our desserts or there would be a lot of troubles. There would be fights. Mm -hmm. Death. Table, the, table the, flipping, you know, doors locked. So what are some of your like signature yeah. treats then? Like what did people look forward to? The pound cake, carrot and cake, cake, cake yes. cheesecake. And we still make the pound cake. We we uh, remix it a little bit to make it a little healthier. And if you can make pound cake healthy, we did it. And, um, <laughs> and the we, carrot cake. And the too. carrot cake. And we, we don't really make cheesecake. Well, we don't sell cheesecake, but that was a, one of our dishes growing up too to make. Mm -hmm. Ooh, is there so like a the secret menu? <laughs> can I get um, cheesecake if I like know to ask for it? Um, <laughs> we'll think about it. Okay. Because I don't want to put that out there. And we're oh. like, no, all right, no, no. all right. That's no, fair. Our cheesecake's <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> well, from Boca Raton, I doubt that very much. And I understand that a lot of your baked goods are vegan, and you can, or you can even make the desserts that are not. You can make them vegan. We can make a lot of them vegan. A lot of the cookies, yes, because that it was really hot like a couple years ago. Yeah, I mean, it's you saying it's blasphemous. I'm reading your lips, Carrie. You saying that? that oh that's no, blasphemy? I said no. Ch Chip said, "Did any of their family think it was a half-baked idea to go into business together?" And I was like, "Oh, <laughs> yes." <laughs> yes. <laughs> we Jeez. have some naysayers, yes, of course. We still have naysayers. Did you bake with your parents when you were kids? Yes, that's what they were saying. Always in the kitchen, right? Well, our mom, our mainly our mom, our grandma, and an aunt that would bake things from scratch. Yeah. And they're like, oh, you want to eat in this kitchen? Yep. I haven't done this in a while. Look, it's just the dog. Dog cam. Wow. Dog cam. <laughs> Shh, don't tell her. Okay. Beautiful dog. So cute. Like a teddy bear. Uh, that dog is adorable. Anyway. Um, so listen, there's a lot of times where people say something's a good idea because you can cook, because you can, you know, whatever. And they say it's a good idea. Baking's a hard business. You know, who who fact checked you on the idea that this was a good idea to get into? Because it's a tricky business, right? Who who told you? Here's how you'll get rich. Am I rich? Um, you know what? <laughs> I'm waiting. I, um, I said, "Why not?" I wanted to try it, and it was bugging me. So I was like, "Let me just try it, and if I like it, I'm going to keep doing it." So that's what I've been doing. I like it. Um, I enjoy it. I enjoy um, 
meeting people and begging for people. Making and, them smile, like yeah. their face when our, our treats hit their mouth is like, that's the yeah. best thing ever. <laughs> we have a lot of nostalgia when they eat our goods. So um, I just enjoy it for now. You know, I might not in a year or two, who knows, but I just enjoy it. So people mm -hmm. mostly told me not to do it. You what know, so I just, anyway. Because there's a lot of competition, but the, the corner of the market we were trying to reach are people who were transitioning to be vegan or they were just looking for a healthier lifestyle because we, in our business, we have found that food is the cause of a lot of health problems that people have. And we wanted to have a way that you could still enjoy all your classic treats without it having yep. such a heavy burden on your health and your well being without sacrificing it tasting good because there are a lot of vegan things and or <laughs> that are not so good. The so good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they just make, camouflage make, the veganish part of it. <laughs> right. Sugar. They just right. make it sweet and it's just like this is not good. This is like for a child that likes sugar. <laughs> and we're not a huge fan of just sugary sweets. Like we need that adult sweetness, that balance that with the saltiness. Yes. And not just, oh, it's dessert, it's sweet, it's good. No, it's not. Just because it's, it's, it's vegan, sweet, you right? It's got to hype it up like that. Uh -uh. Not okay. So you use all <laughs> natural ingredients. Yes. And you went about this really smart. You actually, do you still not have a brick and mortar store? You still bake yeah. and then ship and deliver? We exactly. do. Um, that was another thing I had to research because I knew we weren't going to going to start out in how do we market ourselves not having a building. So I researched and I said, wow, they have a lot of pop-ups in Atlanta because we're from the West Coast and we didn't know what was going on here. And I was like, well, what can we do if we're not going to have an actual bakery? And I found out pop-ups were the way. Well, you know, obviously I had to shift this. We had to One shift this year. Um, but Pop-ups up, pop were the way to kind of get our name out there. And that really helped us with just getting our name out there and getting our food in people's mouths. Nazim has a question. Is this a side gig or a main business? And how long have you been baking? Well, they've been baking forever, but I think Nazim probably Since means where did you start with this? Yeah. <laughs> uh, we started in 2015. And it is a main hustle right now. Um, yeah. But People are always going to want tasty baked goods. Do you ship do. things outside of Georgia? Yeah. So, I mean, we're here. Our, our website is on hiatus right now. But when it's back, you'll see what can be shipped and what can't be. We specify. So but you're not get there quick because I'm going to get there <laughs> first. <laughs> so like cakes yep, are local yeah. delivery only, which makes so much sense. But you can right. get other you don't it's expensive yeah. and it could get crazy. You know, people are angry around this time of year. They might be throwing boxes. They'll be like, oh, it's such fragile. I'm going to throw it. So that's <laughs> what That'll ruin your cake. Yeah. Look at their shenanigans going on in the, in the comments. Gary says, I've already consumed my 2021 cookie allotment this week. This week? It's Monday. <laughs> You'll right? next week. You know, it's been a tough morning. Right. <laughs> I don't know. And Gary's on the West Coast too, so he, you know, he's he's already hit it. It's really early, yeah. Wow. So what about yeah. during the pandemic? How have, a lot of businesses have actually experienced, obviously, a downturn during the pandemic. What about two dough girls? What about baked goods? It it, we, it was kind of like a seesaw. It got really quiet when it first shut down, and during the warmer season, like spring and summer, we would normally do a lot of our live pop-ups and there'd be a lot of different events and festivals and, and farmers markets that we would do. So all of that was completely gone. So um, a lot of the people who already knew us have still been supporting and, and new people have been popping up. And, you know, a lot of people are getting things shipped now. So that has helped it kind of balance out from what we lost all this year. I think people are sad too. So they're ordering dessert. They're like, dessert. they want something that's almost Coping with candy. Right, coping with candy. So I think they're, you know, just trying to get yeah. a sense of normalcy and they want something delicious. Mm -hmm. Like, what's his so, name that's eating cookies for- All, all right. right. Oh. Gary says that the Italian bakery cookie factory going on with my other half, so. Apparently, oh, there's okay. been a lot of baking 
Not only is she beautiful and (laughs) nice and actually caring to be with a guy like Gary, (laughs) uh, but she's also crafty. So who knew? Hey, Carol asked a question I wanted to know too. What's your number one? Like, what's the thing everybody's dying to have and is like rattling your door for it to open again? What is the number one thing that they want from two dough girls? I think it would be a tie between our sweet browns and our pound cake. Our sweet browns are just like a cookie you can't really complain about because it has no chocolate, no fruit. No nuts. So, no spices. No spices. So it's just like a delicious brown butter cookie. It's a and sugar cookie, but it's like on another level. From it's an here. adult level of yes. deliciousness. And then the pound cake is just, it's, it's not dry. Up, it's called heaven up pound cake for a reason. We'll just say that. Mm. Yeah. So what makes it different <laughs> from regular pound cake? Like what makes it different I mean, from the stuff that comes in the tin foil container that you sloop out onto a plate? Why? That's the thing. People are like, oh, I need to eat my pound cake with ice cream. And it's like, why? Who we eat pound cake and ice cream? We, we didn't grow up with dry pound cake. So we didn't know that was like a thing until we actually got into this business. So we want to apologize to everyone <laughs> who had to grow up with dry pound cake and know that you don't have to live like that anymore. Because yeah, we didn't know. You. We didn't know it was a thing. I mean, we put <laughs> a lot of butter in there and a lot of actual. Right. So it's like, soda. why do you need ice cream with that? <laughs> now we know what the ice cream was about. Yeah. Oh, now you understand <laughs> our struggle, is what you're saying. I get it. And Nazim says, I always complain with my cookies. <laughs> it's hard to eat warm, fluffy, baked goods. Oh, I beat them every time and get them into my mouth, even though they struggle. <laughs> I win against the baked goods every time. Yep. That pound Buddy. cake is all mine. <laughs> I'm going to get it. <laughs> what, what's your best guess for 2021 plans for your business? Our best what? What's your best guess for your 2021 plans for your business? Um, We're still, we're still toiling around with a few ideas. And uh, we're going to be doing a lot more wholesale. Well, we're going to be doing wholesale and probably a lot more of what we've been doing. Because so we might get into other shops, doing collaborations with other shops with the with the wholesaling. And I think we do want to stay m- kind of mobile. We're not sure if we want an actual physical shop still. Yeah, then you especially- have to like show up every day. <laughs> yeah, you're right. That is a downside to it. <laughs> so we're in manage people. That too. There's a lot yeah. to go into when you have an actual building. So we're still floating around ideas about how to keep it going without that and still be ex- very accessible. We still want to be more accessible to our fans. Yeah, and hopefully the warm season will bring more pop-ups again and we'll have some sense of normalcy again in that department. But we'll see, Chris. I don't know. I have no Love idea. It. I don't know what is exactly going to happen in even the next month. So Yeah, we're trying to just mm-hmm. ride the wave as it goes. Yeah. For all those people who told you not to open a bakery, I bet they sneak by your pop-up shop and like buy a bunch of stuff and hope you don't recognize them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I do. I've seen one with a big mustache, one with a wig. <laughs> right. <laughs> Having that pound cake in their mouth. Yeah. 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 Yep. Well, two dough <laughs> girls, <laughs> Tracy and Kelly, right? Thank you so much for coming and being part of this today. Thank you. Stick of around, course. by the way. We'll bring you back in a minute, but stick around. We'll bring you backstage. Okay. Boop. You went boop. Look at you are up to no good in the comments today. It's it's a shenanigans all the way around. We're gonna have to I get Eileen in here. We're gonna have to get need the dean to straighten us out. We're gonna have to take some some breathing in and maybe some breathing out. We'll have to get Dean Dominguez in here to to figure it all out. And her dog. And her uh, dog. <laughs> look, I mean, you can't teach downward dog without the dog. So I guess that's what this had to be. Oh, we'll have to ask. Nazim had a question for the two dough girls. We'll have to ask oh. them what platform they use. Sure. Yeah, we have a lot of questions about baked goods, my Lynn. I don't know. Listen, all I know is that the number one thing we can do for the new year is to eat baked goods. I really mm. think like that's the best. I think pound cake, that's going to be my, and I feel, I feel liberated to know that like there is a world without dry, without dry pound cake. So yay. Thank you. Right. It's very goods. freeing. I agree. I feel I feel I definitely feel liberated. When's the last time you ate pound cake though, my Lynn? Do you teach oh, can you come teach on. yoga? Do they like not let you in anymore if you eat pound cake? No, the whole point of yoga is so that you can eat pound cake. This is the thing people don't get. The whole entire point is that you can eat, especially like what they're doing, like 
semi healthy, you know, get it a little healthier, get, you know, make it a little more mindful. It's not about yoga is definitely not about like sucking the joy out of life. It's the opposite. It's about making it like way fucking better. Like, you know, it's about like, let's like do some of this stuff so that we can make our lives more fun and more exciting and eat more good stuff. But, you know, kind of then the next day, maybe you you won't eat that that much stuff. So I think that probably stems from people thinking that uh, yoga is fitness and fitness is torture. Yeah. Like, I think there's this whole mindset, you know, in the Western world that, you know, the gym is the punishment for the dinner Yeah. Uh, instead of like, boy, you can really do some good stuff with your body. Now, the few times, don't everybody laugh, that I've practiced yoga more than once in a row. One thing I learned is that it t- takes me out of spending a lot as much money in chiropractory and massage therapy because I'm helping my body get to where it needs to go. Exactly. Uh, but you're preaching and teaching a little bit more than that and saying yeah. not only your body, but your mind. Now, when people say that, they don't they don't really think that through. They just think that's what it says on the side of their yoga pants. Can you yeah. talk just a little bit about your philosophy? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I definitely think that the entire reason that, that we do this is like that we don't get an owner's manual when we're born. You know, we have no idea why we're here or what, what why we're doing what we're doing. And so I think the idea of yoga is in the West, we think of yoga as just asana, which is just the movement, but true yoga is really a way to kind of like still your mind. It's, you know, it's meditation, there's a little bit of mantra. And then of course there's also the asana. And um, and when you do all of these, it's like kind of, to me, it's like you can crack the code a little bit about how it is that we can live a life that's fun and joyful, how we can engage more into life. So um, I don't know. I think that that's my philosophy is like, let's not get uh, the, the mind can spin. The mind can like kind of go crazy. And so instead of letting the mind spin, let's like engage with life. Let's not let it constantly be going. Let's find ways and technologies that we can like engage with life. So whatever it is that's happening, we can be in it, like fully experience it. And then nothing's the same, you know, life is changing all the time. Every single second, like our cells are regenerating, everything is different, but the mind tells us like, oh, this is the same thing, the same thing, the same thing. And then that's when we get bored. We try to escape from it, doing all sorts of crazy things that aren't that good for us. Um, But if we can really like settle in and just be with life as it is, we can kind of see like the insanity and the like, uh, you know, how extraordinary it is. And then we don't want to escape from it. We want to really be in it. And that, um, to me, that's what makes it, that's, that's the reason, that's the reason to do it. So I, I do want to start off with one thing, which is that, I mean, I know I just said a bunch of things, so I'm not talking about <laughs> all right, forget all that. Anyway, oh, yeah, forget forget all that. I do want to start off with saying, like, I think that this whole menta- this whole New Year's mentality of like, all right, like now I'm going to get myself together and do this thing right. I think that there's something that's a little counterproductive about that. I think that the first thing we should do would just be like, you're awesome. Like just where you, exactly where you are, what you're doing, whatever, like in your mind, you're telling yourself you're a mess of or whatever that is, like you're, you're good. Like just start there. Um, I saw this little two-year-old when I was in the dog park with my dog, which I'm sure we'll, we'll make it in here at some point. I was in the dog park and, um, thanks Carol. (laughs) Um, when I was, um, in the dog park, there was this little kid, this like two-year-old and she literally would like take a step forward and she'd be like, yay, I stepped. And then she would like pet the dog and she'd be like, yay, pet dog, you know, like, and I thought like, that's the coolest thing. Like to actually just appreciate what we do, you know, like we got up, we put headphones on and we're here with each other. It's like, yay, we're, we're, we're doing this. And, And I think so much of what we're doing is beating ourselves up all day long instead of just appreciating the things we do. So deep breath and like first things first for this year is like you did at least a couple things that are good this year. I <laughs> you survived. Know? I mean, like you know, we, right. We survived. I mean, first of all, we survived. We're here. We took a breath and we're here. And a lot of people, you know, I mean, so, you know, can't say that right now. So it is something to be extraordinarily grateful for. Baby yoga, my Lynn. Chuck says, I heard that in 2020, there was a move to get younger people involved in the practice. I kept hearing about baby yoga, so it must be popular. I mean, all I can say about that is I just pretend like I'm a baby and do yoga. So (laughs) no one has ever said that. I ate cream of wheat. Yay. Exactly. Yay. It's a delivery system for the sweeteners and the whatever else you want to put in it. Valentina, like red. Valentina, the best like cooking show 
person who never hosted a cooking show but did a video for us. She's amazing. Yoga with baby goats. <sighs> Gary wants to know your stance on yoga. This is mm. the real. You know, right. Chip, by the way, was making the baby Yoda pun if nobody caught it. But yeah, it's it's uh yeah. Are you just gonna call that out? My Lynn, celebration versus punishment. Yeah. You know, yeah. one of the things that you're going for is that um, so many people spend so much of their time uh, perseverating on the bad side of things. That's What's, a mighty big word for Monday after all. Right. Uh, uh, you know, really hanging on to and clinging to the bad poops in their life. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about what you do to kind of reset that. What are the mantras you use to pull people into, if not like, hooray, I'm going to go run down the street excited and naked, but like, I'm not going to think about all the bad things right now. I'm just going to, I'm just going to get going again. What's yeah. your, what's your mantra for that? I mean, I have, I have a few, <laughs> I feel like we have to have a toolbox that we can go to, but I, I mean, first thing is like you wake up first thing. It's like, just try to smile like an internal smile. Like I, I, I'm one of those people, like I'm half Puerto Rican, half Cuban. And I used to drink. I don't, I don't anymore. Not that I have anything against it. I think it's awesome, but it's just the way it made me feel like I was obsessed with coffee. So like I would wake up and like, I was like, life is hell until I could get that coffee inside of me. And I kind of made everybody know how hellish life was. So I think that when I, you know, basically waking up is now just wake up and just smile, you know, smile and be like, okay, I'm, you know, take a deep breath. and like, thank you for this day. And then the other, the other main ones that I do is I just say, I think that to me, the greatest mantras are like, you know, you know, thank you for this life. How may I serve? Like, how can I do good in the world? And then I always try to visualize that like this internal, like, I know this, this is, this sounds very yoga-y, so bear with me, but it's kind of like a, an, a, like this, like bowing to like everything in life. And that means everyone, you know? So it's just like a very, um, you know, just like, just like it's humble and it's just like excited about the thing. So those, those are, those are three of the main ones. Just, you know, thank you. You know, how can I serve and all of that? Yes. No, I live in Miami. Honor. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nazim had said that his last address was in South Beach. So he was really excited before he Yay. moved. Yay. I, well, I love Corraditos are the best. I mean, people like that's one of the coolest things that happened when I moved to Miami is like out of nowhere, you'll be at your desk working and then like somebody will show up with like a, a thing of coffee and like these tiny little cups and pass it around. And it's, it's just, again, it's just like sweet. It's like nice. It's like it, it, all the time. And you just do this tiny little shot. It's awesome. Yeah. That's so. a focus on service. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I mean, service, it's such a hard thing to quantify that because we get caught in our minds. We start thinking, oh, I have to like travel to some place and I have to help people that, that need my help. And it gets into this weird thing in our minds. And I really think that just start where you are, you know what I mean? Just be like a little nicer to the person that's in the room with you. And then like, See, that's like, so hard. That totally depends on who's in the room with me. <laughs> Can I do well, it or not? I mean, right. So that's the thing, right? I mean, we're all like conditioned to think that like somehow if we can get the external things right in our lives, then we'll be happy. But it's really the, the goal. And part of the whole reason why we sit for a few minutes and meditate and do whatever these practices are so that we can cultivate a little bit of dif distance from what our mind thinks is actually happening to just kind of coming back into our spirits. And, um, and like, basically when we come back to that place, then we're filling ourselves up with this like good, joyful, loving feeling. And then even if you get poked by those people in your house, which by the way, we all get that, you know, what comes out is still nice stuff versus like, ah, which is, you know, if, if you're, which I see a lot, which is why the yoga teacher thing, like I struggle with it because, you know, you see that, you know, you see people that are like, oh, peace, love, joy, blah, 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 blah. But it feels to me like it's like frosting on top of like a mold. And like, if you get beyond that frosting, you know, if you poke, it's not necessarily good. I think the work is like inside. It's dried pound cake. Yeah, it's not, it's dried pound cake with some <laughs> frosting on it. No. So girls have told no. us we don't have to accept that. Like you have to have some we good do stuff. Better. Right. We, can, we can do way better than that. We can do way better than that. So Brother, Brother Bob Berg is in love with you, as are a lot of other people who are connecting <laughs> with you in all these different ways. Bob wrote an incredible <laughs> book called The Go-Giver and several other books. Oh, nice. Um, so he's he's Thank here you. for it. He's a plant-loving gentleman as well and is an animal rights kind of person. So there's that. Um, 
one of the thoughts I was having while you were sort of explaining this and all that is I'm trying to figure out how screenwriting and filmmaking and all that fits in. What's that part of my Len and how does Thank it connect you. with yoga you? Thank you so much for asking. <laughs> um, I, I, you didn't ask my origin story, which I'm going to like jump in and say, I really need quickly, to go. because I, um, the very first gift that I ever received was before I was born. And it was my father gave it to my mother. They, they blame each other. They're divorced. So who knows how it actually happened. But one of them gave the other one a bib that said my son, the doctor. So my father is a doctor. My grandfather is a doctor on and on. So I was born like a disappointment. <laughs> I was not a man. And then of course I didn't end up being a doctor, even though I tried, I really did. I, I studied, you know, I did the post back pre-med thing. I, blah, I did all this stuff. And, um, and it took a long time to kind of realize like I'm a creative person and I'm really into like spiritual things. Like I, I had no idea what that meant. I was never told that that was even an a possibility of things that I could do. And so, um, so storytelling, kind of figuring out my own story and helping other people figuring out their own stories was this like revelatory thing for me. And, and, um, and then the hero's journey and the heroine's journey, like uncovering that and like how it is that we all go through these experiences and where, you know, we are in our world, we don't know what's going on. And then like something great or something terrible happens and it shocks us out of this. And then we go through all these trials and tribulations and how we learn. And, um, and then, you know, we go through this dark night of the soul. And then usually we, hopefully we figure something else about ourselves or about other people that we can then share. And, um, you know, the yoga journey every day that we, that you, when you do like an asana practice, you're basically following that same mythic journey. You know, you're, you're kind of born, you go through these like trials and then like, you literally you start like in tabletop, like a baby crawling. And then you go through the trials, like warrior poses. And then, you know, you end in Shavasana and then you're in the fetal position. And um, to me, that's what we're doing all day long. We're just trying to figure out who we are, why we're here, what we're doing. And, and that, to me, storytelling um, is one of the most extraordinary ways of, of figuring that out about ourselves and with each other. So. so one day you were doing yoga and then you looked over and you were writing a screenplay. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I got no it. It, it, it kind of. I mean, it was not exactly like that, but kind of. It was like You're I. A disappointment to your family. I'll start <laughs> writing screenplays. Yeah, I was. I'm a disappointment I'm to my family. And then so let me like <laughs> let me rebel and move to L, like get in my car with my boyfriend, sell everything and like like literally like forget all the medical st school stuff, moved to LA and I started um, working for film, you know, working in the film business, working in a, I worked for what is now in uh, William Morris Endeavor. I worked for Mini Drivers Production Company. I worked for Nelly Galan and Latin American Film and Television. And then I went to USC and got my um, master's MFA in screenwriting and was in filmmaking. And then, um, <clears throat> you know, then got how to, semi-traumatic thing with my daughter when I was pregnant with her, but she came out okay, but it was this whole thing. And then I wanted to move home to be your family. And then I got involved in education and teaching and trying to inspire creativity in others. And in the middle of all that, more challenges came and I couldn't figure out how to work them out in like the normal way. So I started uh, really diving into yoga and spirituality. So here I, am. I knew we'd get there. I believe. By the way, Stop in case it, anyone needs it, um, mini yeah. driver. That's right, mini driver. Yeah. That was like awesome. What is that? That's like an ask your parents moment or something. Not that old. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, we've seen Goodwill Hunting. I think. Yeah. I know yeah. That is. I think yeah. I know. So my Lynn, what is, what, okay. One of the things we were going to talk about was New Year's rituals because I yes. know you got some. So what are you doing to get ready for twenty twenty one? Yeah. Um, so, all right. Again, like kind of like how I started off, I think if you do nothing, you're fine. <laughs> like don't, don't stress too much about it. But, you know, I saw Issa Rae had posted on Instagram, this great vision board that she did five years ago. Um, so if you guys can find, look up Issa Rae, who, whom I love, who actually did, she went to Stanford for undergrad and then she went to New York Film Academy afterwards. But she, um, she did this great vision board and it was basically like one column of the vision board was everything that she was hoping for her um, professional life. The center column was everything that she was like hoping for her uh, personal life. And then the, the final one was miscellaneous. And then she went through and stated all these things that had happened over the past five years. And I was like, you know what? I am there. Yeah, there it is. I am definitely doing that again this year. I've done it. I, I did it a while ago. And when my teenage daughter heard this, she goes, uh, mom, this is what teenagers do, vision boards. I'm like, I know, like I'm like a late teenager, I'm fine with it. 
But I really think there's something to it. I mean, there's just something about seeing it. And I also think there's something about the way the subconscious picks these images that we don't even know what they're gonna mean until later. And that's what kind of what Issa Rae was pointing out in her little video was that as she was picking these, these things, they were like, I had no idea that this thing was gonna, was gonna show up. So I'm definitely doing that this year. I'm gonna go to CVS, get a big poster board, get some magazines and just kind of like see what, what pops up. Um, and then I'm going to get on my bike ride, um, with, uh, my husband down and we'll go down to the beach and sit with some friends. And, um, you know, like I said, in, in Miami, there's a lot of, um, Brazilians. So I've like kind of, we've inherited this Brazilian tradition where everybody wears white, they go to the beach and they're honoring this like goddess. Um, you know, they're trying they, they send white flowers into the ocean to kind of like honor this sea goddess. Then they go into the ocean and they jump over seven waves and they say a wish for each um, of the seven waves. I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm going to jump in the ocean and jump over seven waves, but you can do that. <laughs> you guys can do that if you want. You don't miss your chance of seven wishes. I feel like seven it's worth wishes. the effort, Marlene. I know. It might be worth the effort. I need you to might mess one wish up, but if you get seven, it's, one of them is good. Point. The one we do, the one my family always did, and this is like from the Spanish tradition, which is a little easier, is you just eat 12 grapes right at the stroke of midnight, and that's supposed to be like each – grape is a wish and i love the origin story of this is that basically these like um you know these people that were selling grapes just wanted to like get rid of the grapes at the end of the year <laughs> so they were like we were a, yes they were marketing like, we've got a great new um tradition which is that you have to eat grapes so, oh, wait i have one that i found that i have to share because of the dough girls okay this is amazing so the dutch tradition is that they eat these like these things called olibolin, which is like fatty dough, like basically like some sort of a donut. And they do this because they have this like goddess, like Percha, who will like, if you've been bad, if you haven't had enough fun during the Yule period, which is between um, winter solstice and the new year, they will like, the, this goddess Percha will like cut your belly open and like, stuff you with garbage so basically they eat fatty dough <laughs> so that they eat fatty dough so that the the sword will come out more easily and i guess not oh. hurt them as much so gross that's crazy i feel I'm like not, logic doesn't hold but I yeah don't know. there's a lot of weird logic there but there's two things that i love about this one which is a you get to eat lots of fatty dough which i think is fun and Always two, fun. like the only thing you get in trouble for is that you didn't have enough fun for, for the days leading up. I mean, come on. That's like, I don't know. That seems really good compared to our puritanical stuff, which is always like, you know, did you work 20 hours and run, you know, a marathon? Otherwise, you're not good enough, you know, so anyway. All right. We are dragging the two dough girls yeah. back to talk about Old Bolin. You ready? Yes. <sighs> I, I gotta, I've gotta know. I've gotta know. You know, are you ready to make us some fried dough? That was dose a disgusting or? story. That was really scary. That was a horror who, story. Who says that to kids? Oh my god! I know. I'm talking funny. about two dough girls. Yeah, there's a story where you get daddy dough and you get stabbed. Like, oh, oh, wait, wait, oh. I'm not telling this right. Let me think. Uh, it won't hurt as bad if you that's eat a bunch of daddy dough first. That's gonna be my new tagline: the horror story telling. Oh, <laughs> That was scary. Sorry. Maybe your next screenplay would be a horror story that? about that stuffing yourself with fatty, but still better than dried pound cake. If you're going to die, don't eat that last. You're eat absolutely right. Actually. Right? <laughs> you know stabbing is going to happen. I'm just saying. Plan ahead. Oh, oh my God. don't want that as a last meal. <laughs> Definitely not. No. None of you here had a had a very traditional choice for your business as of right now like you may or may not have slipped in and out of traditional business but you find your way to some pretty non-traditional places what gives you the power to do that and what would you tell people who are not yet doing that and who are still kind of uh in their shell and hiding from the world i just say you know what um when you get old you're gonna look back and regret or be really proud of what you did and i don't want to be really old looking back the um, shoulda, coulda, woulda. Yeah, I don't want it. And you just have to constantly create the life you want and stop looking at what everybody else is doing. Focus on yourself. Um, create a workable plan if you're a planner. I'm a planner. Write it down. 
repeat it to yourself, take a step every day to do it and just rest. Don't overwhelm yourself and just, you know, take a moment or two every day to work toward this goal, accomplish it, move on to the next goal. And I think as humans, as especially women, I think we make it harder than it has to be. And just make a workable plan. You're nodding to, like, he's not like he, Chris. When, is, when you said that about the women, he's like, Chris I like, know yes, about that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Always Please, way to know. <laughs> <laughs> life, life is harder so for yourselves cool. and harder for each other. Oh, my God. <laughs> yes. But women are fun. all about crabs in a bucket pulling each other down. And also you have that thing where you have to be extra. Like, you know, and, and it's not, it's not even your fault, right? Like the world and Excuse society. Me. Like, you're like, you people better. don't know better women. Let me help you. Are you freaking kidding right now? I am Are saying. you kidding me right now? Yellow card Brogan. You know, what else is new? I'm saying that it's really tough. It's really yeah. tough. I, I mean, life is supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be full. You're supposed to be doing things you want to do. It's not supposed to be a constant struggle, a constant battle, a constant questioning of what you're supposed to be doing. Like, just do some yeah. living. What and do if you not, do? And, and if not it. now, then when? Like, I think everything Thank you guys you. said, if not now, then when? I mean, if the, if no. the goal is, if your goal is to like, live this like joyful, peaceful, happy life, then everything, you, whatever you're doing should be, leading towards that you know what i mean it's like what you're doing you should enjoy doing it and and just just you know we get lost in thinking that we should be doing like me what other people told us we should be doing and that's always a giant waste of your energy you're just wasting your energy down the wrong path just find the thing you love and do it because yeah, how does how does what you do affect anybody you know it's like why do you care so much about what i'm doing right and why should I care? How does it affect me? Like if I'm focused on my own thing, I won't even be looking at anybody else. You know, that's one thing I got going for me is I don't care at all. <laughs> what else is there you me? Go. Lucky that's me. So we have two more oh, things we got to do in this show, by the way, we have two more things to do. One is person of the day. I just had one. Oh, and here's our person of the day. Kaboom. Oh. Uh, I guess if you call your, ex-wife nepotism then i guess you know i can give my ex-wife person of the day that seems perfectly fair oh nice um, you just want her to bake something for you that isn't dry like so maybe yeah, you know, no, dry dry pound cake for you actually for christmas uh she, she recreated my mom and dad's uh um uh date balls recipe which is one of my favorites from childhood so Aww. it's uh dates with like rice krispies in them or something like that and then all kinds of coconut all over the top and it's Ooh. they're a thing that sounds amazing yes. and they're so yes. simple uh, ultimately but they're like so delicious yay so right. that gets you an apple cat and you can buy it yourself and it's wash it really cool. extra good and turn it into any baked good you want and then the very last part of the show is to ask you the question, what goes in your backpack? I forgot to prep you for this earlier, but it's only one question. It could be something <laughs> physical. It could be something metaphorical. Carrie, what's a favorite from the end? <laughs> Chip says the person of the day award is kind of a burden because you have to go out and buy an apple. <laughs> Come on, Chip. <laughs> Why don't you have the house? <laughs> great responsibility. Uh, yeah. So some of my favorite answers, a lot of people have said empathy, sense of humor, I like fearlessness and vulnerability. Dave Landau said that one. He's a comedian. And Horacio Garcia Rojas from Diablero on Netflix, his was pride, like national pride in where you come from. I like that one too. And then there have been some other physical answers, like Whiskey Nate said, a book you hate, because eventually, if it's all you got to read, like eventually you'll like it or learn something from it. So that was interesting. I know what your favorite is, Chris. My favorite came from a humanitarian clown, and she said an avocado. Uh, second might be uh, the physical one uh, from five-time beatboxing champion Butterscotch. She said a banana. So she doesn't get an apple. So here's the question. <laughs> what goes in your backpack? Why don't we start with Tracy and Kelly? I would say, I would say lip balm. I like lip balm. <laughs> nice. It's yeah, lip balm, hand cream. I'm just naturally dry, and I <laughs> get really, really irritable if – my lips are dry. It's just the worst. So the and bomb. I want snacks. <laughs> I, would, I would have some kind of trail mix in there that has all the things. 
And she's a mother, so she always has to have snacks. <laughs> Do you eat yes. your own stuff? So I worked, my first job was in a bakery and they never ate the baked goods. They had like fruit and vegetables back there. They were eating that stuff and everybody else was eating all the donuts and things. Do you we eat your eat own all stuff? Of that. We oh. eat all the sweets and all the fruits and vegetables. There has to be balance. <laughs> you know, we're talking about living our lives. Like our lives include baked goods. Yes. Oh yeah. I don't want to live if it ain't full of baked goods. I'm just saying. Right. My <laughs> I agree. Back? I think, I mean, I think that I would put the, um, I'd put like my story in there because I don't want to forget and have to go through the same damn like mess ups all over again. Like, I just want like the cliff, like, this is what you went through. This is what you learned. Don't do it again, you know, over and over and over and over again. So I think I'll, I'll keep that. I'll keep like that. Like you saw that movie already. <laughs> don't yeah, exactly. do that don't, again. Just don't do it again. Exactly. Let's see. Cat said my humor, my humor needs lip balm. <laughs> And then Carol oh, asked is. Kelly the question, what's your favorite lip balm? Because evidently Carol's on an Amazon. Um, NYX or NYX has a clear lip balm. It's amazing. Or uh, I think it's Mo Moki Lips. Um, it's like $5 and it's just nice and thick and it, it does me right for hours. I'm going to go looking for it. Kissable. I bet Ben and Jerry's has lip balm. I'm just saying, Carol. Ooh, like, I feel like I feel like yep. the lip smackers, we used to use that as kids. Oh, oh yeah, the Bonnie oh. Bell. Yes, that was my favorite thing to get in my stocking. One of them, <laughs> anyway. One of them. So people <laughs> like that you keep in your story in your backpack. And she yeah. says, thank you. Carol says, thanks. She's going to go shopping right now. <laughs> as, soon as, as soon as the shop's back online, we're going to buy a bunch of stuff. This is going to happen. And then my land, I'm going to have to hit you up for some yoga because I'm going to be wicked off balance. <laughs> I'm eating all those donuts and stuff. No, oh, it's the opposite. Like, many. like they said, the donuts keep you balanced. Just not, you know, not like too many of them. Well, I gotta eat, no, I got to eat a stack of them because, you know, for evenness. <laughs> three, three on a side, maybe. Oh. Yeah. I think like of that. those teachers that came up when Malin was telling the story about the dough stomach. Like, no, don't, don't eat the stack. Mm. That's a horrible story to tell children. Well, Happy New Year. You're going to get run through. <laughs> no, that was from uh, the Dutch culture. The That's Dutch culture is also, if you ever look on the internet for an incredibly hilarious story, David Sedaris uh, tells, it's called Six to Eight Black Men. And it is the Dutch version of Santa Claus travels with six to eight black men. And you have to hear the story. It is. Uh -oh. Do I? You I know. Really do. I'm scared. You really do. And it's like it this is what they tell their kids though. Like if you're not necessarily a good kid, we're gonna kidnap you oh, and you're yeah. gonna get roughed up <laughs> literally by six to eight, never a specific six number. Six to eight black men. You'll and be is, you'll be crying. It is the funniest story. Uh Bye. One, one, <laughs> funny in that way that you know you just can't believe that humans are told this story. Okay. <laughs> so they have a lot of very morbid stories and and nursery rhymes for children. It's so crazy when you look up the histories of a lot of these stories. Right. It's like really for kids. Yeah. Horrific. Yeah. Right. And they're, they're all designed to get you to just like shut up and do what you're told. Oh, <laughs> right. like you're gonna get stabbed. But the New Year's one is disturbing. <laughs> there's nothing. There's no set of rules you can live by. It's like you're getting stabbed. So eat the stuff and no, prepare. No. The rule is you've got to be like cheerful during this time. You got to be like night. You got to be like good, fun, cheerful. That's the that's the that's story. ridiculous. You feel how you feel. So you're supposed I, to fake it. That's a terrible message for children, my Lynn. Terrible. Listen, I didn't. I'm not Dutch. <laughs> 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 I love Dutch people. I love all you Dutch. Be people. Happy I, or mm, die. We do. <laughs> just, you get, Dutch people are great. God bless. Yeah. Uh, you're not Dutch. You know, the lip balm thing reminded me about my grandmother used a really strange lip balm. She was French Canadian, you know, so they do things a little different. So they have their certain kinds of foods that they like. They have their their little rituals. And one of them was how she applied her lip balm and what she used. It was a little weird.